Edward Hopkins, age 59, has been experiencing progressively worsening diarrhea and flushing for the past six months. An indium 111 pentetriotide scan or octreotide scan, an abdominal pelvic CT scan revealed biloba hepatic metastasis with uptake in a mesenteric mass suggestive of primary midgut gastrointestinal tumor. Follow-up, urine 5-HIAA or hydroxyindole acetic acid levels and serum chromogranin A levels were diagnostic of carcinoid syndrome. Let's listen in as Mr. Hopkins and his oncologist discuss his diagnosis and treatment options. So it's the cancer itself that has been causing the diarrhea and flushing all this time? Yes, the condition is called carcinoid syndrome. Your tumor, originally located in the small intestine, is a collection of cells which produces a certain type of hormone, most notably serotonin. And this excess production of hormones is what's been causing the diarrhea and flushing. You know, my primary care doctor thought I had irritable bowel syndrome. He just told me to watch what I ate and to take loperamide. Carcinoid syndrome is rare and is often misdiagnosed as irritable bowel syndrome or other stomach and intestinal issues. Are you having diarrhea every day? At this point, yes, every day, and often several times a day. Would you describe the diarrhea as mild, moderate, or severe, or variable? It, it varies, but it's often severe, explosive. It's been debilitating and very embarrassing. I'm afraid to leave the house. I mean, you know, I'm afraid I might have an accident. I actually keep a change of clothes at work. Are you experiencing flushing at the same time as the diarrhea? Usually, and the flushing can be intense, as if the diarrhea itself wasn't embarrassing enough. Do certain foods make it worse? Um, yeah, uh, high fiber foods are bad, sort of fatty foods. <laughs> That's most of my normal diet. What about alcoholic beverages? bad. I can't take a drink of wine or beer without getting very flushed and I might have to run, I mean run <laughs> to the bathroom. Are you taking any kind of medications for the diarrhea? I've been taking loperamide when I leave the house or work. It helps but not nearly enough. Is there anything that can be done? Do I need surgery? Chemotherapy? Unfortunately, the cancer has already spread to both lobes of your liver so surgery is not an option. However, there are certain medications that have shown to be effective against this particular type of cancer and carcinoid syndrome. The most effective thing we can do Carcinoid syndrome is a constellation of signs and symptoms due to the secretion of chemicals, predominantly serotonin, but other peptides are secreted including histamine, bradykinins and tachykinins. These signs and symptoms include diarrhea, flushing, bronchoconstriction and abdominal pain, and in patients with prolonged carcinoid syndrome, they may present with carcinoid heart disease and rarely pellagra. Carcinoid tumors are part of neuroendocrine tumors, and neuroendocrine tumors are derived from the diffuse endocrine system and have an incidence of around about 7 to 8 100,000 population. They're divided into well differentiated or poorly differentiated tumors and graded according to their KI67 proliferation index or their mitotic index. Neuroendocrine tumors associated with carcinoid syndrome tend to be well differentiated, usually grade one or grade two, according to the WHO classification. And they're mainly derived from the intestine, usually midgut, and would be considered functional, i.e. 
um, tumors which uh, are secreting making hormones which cause a syndrome. In this case, we're discussing carcinoid syndrome. And syndromic neuroendocrine tumors account for around about 10% of neuroendocrine tumors. Carcinoid syndrome in this instance is usually associated with metastatic disease to the liver. Usually the liver would inactivate peptide, but when there are metastases of tumor within the liver, you get direct secretion into the bloodstream and hence the carcinoid syndrome. For bronchial neuroendocrine tumors, they can also be associated with carcinoid syndrome and around about 5% of patients with bronchial neuroendocrine tumors have carcinoid syndrome. Rarely other sites are uh, included with uh, patients with carcinoid syndrome and this may include the hindgut or ovarian neuroendocrine tumors and they also secrete their hormones directly into the blood screens bloodstream because they're retroperitoneal and around about 2% of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors can be associated with carcinoid syndrome. In regard of diagnosis, the key biochemical marker associated with carcinoid syndrome would be serotonin, but more commonly measured is the 24-hour urine 5-HIAA or 5-hydroxyindolacetic acid. You need to be aware that in, when you're measuring the 5-HIA, it's important that patients are on a specific diet 72 hours before and during the urinary collection. And this diet includes um, excluding tea, coffee, chocolate, nuts, bananas, av bananas avocados, and um, other medications such as aspirin. So it's really important to check that your patient has been on a specific diet, otherwise you can get false positive results. The other general marker used in the diagnosis for carcinoid tumor or neuroendocrine tumors in general is the chromogranin A. In regard of imaging, Cross-sectional imaging is always performed in patients, and this will be either MRI or CT. But the most specific imaging, and probably the most sensitive, is the gallium-68 dotaoctreotate PET scan. If that's not available, then one would traditionally use the, perhaps now increasingly historic, indium-111 pentetriotide or octreo scan. With the first-line treatment of carcinoid tumor, or neuroendocrine tumors often in general, we use somatostatin analogs. These can be either octreotide or lanreotide. The other names for octreotide is sandostatin, and lanreotide, the other name for that is somatulin. Usually, um, patients can be initiated on subcutaneous octreotide injections if they're going on to the a once monthly preparation of octreotide LAR or sandostatin LAR and this is an intramuscular injection. For those patients going on to lanreotide, this is a deep subcutaneous injection. Currently the licensing does not suggest you need to start on subcutaneous octreotide prior. These once monthly formulations are well tolerated and have little in the way of side effects. Occasionally, you can have patients complaining of cramping abdominal discomfort, sometimes diarrhea, particularly in the first 48 hours after the injection. Patients might complain of minor hair loss, but this usually stabilizes over a period of a couple of months. And patients after prolonged use, after many months of use, are more predisposed to developing gallstones but 90% of these patients are completely asymptomatic even with their gallstone. Again, over prolonged use, um, the somatostatin analogs inhibit pancreatic enzymes, so patients could develop steatorrhea, and in that scenario, pancreatic enzyme supplements would be suggested.